Um, the O'Donnell were descendants of the great O'Donnells from Tyrone, from the early wars of the late 1590s, that, uh, again, against the British. It's the failed rebellion, they were they were all forced out of Ulster, and the leaders were sent far away in the flight of Earls, where they went off to Spain and then to Europe. Um, O'Donnell um, bought these estates, built this house, and with them was a very important ancient manuscript called the Calliac. Uh, it was an ancient book that, is, that they would carry into battle, and they believed if they brought this book with them into battle, it would guarantee them victory. The book, part of it, dates back to 560 AD, and it's had some of the dams written by um, St. Colum Killer of Iota. Um, apparently, he was of the O'Donnell clan himself and was a prince, and he became a monk and went off to Iona. A, a local rebel priest from the 1798 rebellion, Padman Sweeney. Padman Sweeney was reared in Rossmore here in Newport, and he went to France in the Irish College in uh, Paris where he was educated and he was ordained a priest and he returned to Newport as a curate and got involved in the movement uh, for, with the United Irishmen and uh, it was quite strong in the area. We had um, McLaughlin out in Tienar and whatnot were very influential and they had set up a group and were well trained and were prepared to join the French when they landed in Kalada to force the British out of Ireland for once and for all. When the British defeat, or when the French defeated the British in Castlebar, they came into Newport and Father Manus really offered his service as an interpreter for the French generals to the Irish generals because he was educated in France, he had the French. But when the rebellion failed, um, he had to go into run and hiding. And the local landlord here, O'Donnell, where we'll be going to next, went out of his way to, to capture Father Manus Sweeney. He was becoming under huge pressure as to why his whole estate was a rebel territory. And he had to give evidence that his own sons had fought against the Regis army for the British. And so, in 1799, Father Manasweeney was captured down in Atlas. And the story goes, he was hiding in a loft in a house down there. And when the Redcoats would search a house, if they found nothing in the house, they would fire shots into the roof of the house before leaving the house. When they did this, so in this particular house in Axel, an old woman came running in, oh, God, are you two on target? They killed the priest. When they heard that, they knew that he was hiding in the loft somewhere, and they found him, and they brought him to Kesselbar where he was tried and found guilty over a lot to do with O'Donnell's Newport House to give evidence of his participation with the rebel armies. Uh, he was brought to Newport in his own cart, and he was hung in public display on the market square that went one where these buildings are now on Main Street and at the back of them was the old Main Street and he was hung there. Um, he is buried out in the abbey there in Burroughs so here with this statue of Ned Lyons. Ned Lyons was a local uh, leader of the Irish Republican Army for the War of Independence here and on um, October the 24th Ned was captured by British forces in Kilmore, just outside the town here. Ned was a great cook for the British. He would have huge intelligence in relation to other members of the column, other leaders from around the Mayo area, and where arm guns were. So the British would do everything they could to try and break him, to give him up this information. Ned was taken to Galway, and he was given the harshest of treatment in Galway jail, where he was tortured day and night. It's because his screams were heard by fellow prisoners, kept him awake at night, but Ned never broke. Not to more was heard from Ned after that for a long time until the truth came, where another local man, Michael Caroy, he became leader of um, the West Mill Flying Column later on in the war, and he set out to look to find where Ned was taken to, and he found him, found him in an asylum in Dublin. Ned had been broken and had lost his mind and was insane, and wrapped, rolled up on a bed when Michael found him. He didn't recognise or show any recognition of Michael. He just stayed in a ball on the bed. And um, Garay noticed that all his fingernails had been pulled out. And um, Ned passed away a few years later at the age of 24, or October 20, at the age of 28 on October the 24th, 1924. Um, Ned also had a brother who was badly beaten up by Black and Tan a few years later. He also died some time after his treatment. And another brother also lost his life at a young age. Neither three of them 
medals in the premier for their struggle for Irish freedom. Kilroy, when he took over as leader of the West Mill Flying Column during the last stages of the war, was very anxious to get into combat with the British forces. And there's a lot of, he had a large skirmish around the area of which the second hand forces. Most notably was Kilmina, halfway between Westport here and Newport. Um, ambush was set up there. It didn't go as planned. Uh, he was without his riflemen who had, who had sent to Newport and Westport to, to cause a bit of trouble to try and coax the tents out of their um, garrisons in Westport. And um, he was heavily outgunned and uh, they had to retreat to the mountains. A number of men were wounded, four were killed, and a number more were captured. He made his way to Skirder, just outside the town here in Glen Hest, where again, after a couple of days rest there, they were set upon by RIC forces. But Karai and his officers managed to hold them off while he sent the rest of his column to escape through the mountains with local guides and safe houses. And they regrouped again, and once again, they launched an attack on British forces outside Westport at Carroll Kennedy, and they had a huge success. Karai had learned a lot of lessons as he was going on. These are the Nathan Bank Mountains, and uh, some of you might be more familiar with them being called the White Nathan Wilderness, uh, as part of the Belly Pride National Park. Um, over here to our right, we have Burring Mountain and Glenlaura, and the area of Scudder. And this area was a haven for the rebels during the War of Independence, and even after the 1798 rebellion failed. I lost them found the mountains for refuge because they were hunters nice and day. Uh, the mountain in front of us is Fucker Mountain. And then in the valley below us we have Shamor and Turkle Mountain. Uh, Turkle Mountain was an old mass mountain during the penal laws. Um, there was an area near the top of the mountain on the south side of us called Logna Hafrin, the valley, the hollow of the mass, where people would climb the mountain for safety and celebrate Mass because in penal law times you weren't allowed to practice your Catholic faith. Um, then as we go in there we go into the Glenamu Mountains and the mountain then that's gradually going up is called Bingurum. So during the War of Independence the people in these mountains looked after Michael Karai in the West Mayo Flying Column. They would not have been as successful as they were without these people. Uh, they fed them, they looked after them, they gave them safe passage, they informed them when there was troops coming or whatnot, and they hid their arms for them in the valleys down there in Samoa and around. So again, I put a few words together last year, seeing it was 2016, and about the people that we never celebrate, who did so much for the cause of Irish freedom. It's called Forgotten Heroes. So just bear with me again. I am a proud old woman. I know not to boast a gun, but I bake the bread and make the stew for the men on the run. I am a tired old man, too late has come the cannon roar, but as young men rest I stay on watch outside my cabin door. I am a fair young maid, I march where I'm into war, and I'm prepared to fight and die for the cause we have written for. I am a fearless child, the future of our nation, right now I have a role to play, I carry information. I am the mountain man, I walk these hills each day. I am their ears and eyes, for the rebels I lead the way. For we are a risen people, and they will never understand how we will do all we can to free our native land. So when the books are written of the heroes who fought and died, please won't you remember us, the heroes by their side. All right. Thank you. What's it called? Forgotten Heroes. Forgotten, Forgotten Heroes, okay.